Hey, this is Ed from The Grey Area, and welcome to another episode of Through the Years, where this month we shine a light on a genre that has many names, Anadolu Pop, Anatolian Rock, or as it seems to be known these days in the West, Turkish Psychedelia. Our story starts a good 35, 40 years prior to the realisation of the music, when, in the 1920s, the first president of the Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, brought in a whole wave of reforms. His idea was to modernise and secularise the nation, looking to the West for modern ideas whilst wanting to build a national Turkish identity. Anatolian folk began to spread as a more popular form of music instead of the more traditional Ottoman sound. During the late 50s and into the 1960s, Western groups such as the Tornadoes, the Ventures, Elvis Presley and later the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin all became popular with kids aping the style, playing guitars with their friends in their garages. In fact, most of the big hitters in the genre recorded their early singles in English, a lot of the time kind of sounding like knockoffs of the bands they were imitating. Now, of course, a fact like this is pretty hard to substantiate, but it's fairly widely recognised that Erkin Koray's Bir Eylül Akshama, which went on to inspire the Rolling Stones' Paint It Black in a strange full-circle event, was the first Turkish language rock and roll song recorded and released. performance at a school concert that inspired the likes of Barush Mancho and went on to start the Turkish psych explosion. Barush took it upon himself to pursue rock stardom by any means possible, travelling the world, learning numerous languages and doing everything he could to break into the international music market. Alas, for the most part it wasn't to be, and he seemingly did come to realise this, focusing his attentions back home in Turkey. His signature long hair and handlebar moustache is immediately recognisable, even to the most casual of fans. Backed by his group Kurtalan Express, this is Barush Mancho with Ulum Alahun Emli.
çöker dolar gözleri hırsız olaya yağmur inerken bir hüzün çöker dolar gözleri kim aramış kim bulmuş dertlerine çare ölüm Allah'ın emri ayrılık olmasaydı of oh, oh. Aşk acısını her kim anarsa barış adını kim aramış kim bulmuş derlerine Another pivotal moment in the growth of Turkish popular music was the launching of the Hurriyet newspaper's competition Altun Mikrofon or the Golden Microphone. It was arranged to encourage the development of new songs in Turkish, blending folk music and a Western style, and ran between 1965 and 1968. Later attempts to bring it back did occur but were not quite as successful, though through the years the competition gave opportunities to now well-known names in the scene. Mavi Uşkulaş, Siluetlaş, Selçuk Alaguz, Cem Karaja, Moalaş and Edip Akbaram. So to celebrate such an important part of the music, we'll play something from one of its alumni, this is Selçuk Alagos with his track Malabadi Kuprusu.
dedi Fatma'nın babasında Katı ve insafsızdı bu aşkın karşısında Kararlıydı zalim şey onları öldürmeye Yine bir seher vakti pusu kurdu köprüye Tabancalar patladı sevgililer susmuştu Malabadi köprüsü aşka mezar olmuştu with his track Guneshe Dun Chicheim. Now Ersen, whilst a fantastic singer and has a great many tunes that I absolutely love, he did seem ready to change at the drop of a hat if it meant continued success, whether that was his clothing or indeed even his musical style. He was one of the few featured in this show that came out as a right-wing sympathizer in the 80s and recorded for the government TRT channel and even played for the troops. Something that kept him in the government's good books but caused most of the public and musicians to turn away in disgust. So as opposed to following more from Ersen, we'll have a look instead at his backing band, Karadashlar. The track I'm going to play is a very famous Turkish folk song. 
that's been covered by a great many artists doing their own takes on it. The song is titled Nem Kaldu, and this is Kardashlar with their very own Sehan Karabai on vocals. <laughs> And now onto a towering figure in Turkish music, Cem Karaja. He set the blueprint for what it meant to be a Turkish rock star, and his voice commanded your attention, while his lyrics never shied away from his political and moral beliefs. A man of the people, and someone who gave so many other musicians their start in the business, including Karabay, who we previously just heard in Kardashlar, who served as Jem's backing band, and also went on to be a member of another Karadja backing band, who we're about to hear from, Apashlash. This next track is by Jem Karadja, featuring Apashlash, and is entitled Rezim Deki Guziash Lar. Get 
Bilmezsin beni Bir gün belki hayatta Geçmişteki günlerden Bir teselli ararsın Bak o zaman resmime Geçmişteki günlerde bir teselli ararsın Bak o zaman resmime Kör akan o yaşları
was Halichte Guneshin Batoshu by Moalash, known incorrectly to many Westerners as Mogola. Having already achieved a decent amount of success as a standalone band, they also then went on to record some music with the aforementioned Jem Karaca. Moalash were part of the bedrock of Turkish rock, with members splintering into numerous other groups afterwards, and featuring Murat Ses, the man credited as inventing the term Anadolu pop. Keyboard player Ses later went on to join the following band, Dostlash, who will now hear backing Idepak Bayram. The track I'm going to play is Demen Benim Gamlu Yaslu Gunleme. <laughs>
Deepak Bahram was a previous winner of the Alton Microphone competition and a man who suffered a great deal as a boy, afflicted by polio. Idip himself said his voice was shaped by this pain. He formed Doslash with former members of Moalash and Kurtalan Express and with his almost preacher-like vocals lent into the entire Western palette, drawing on rock, funk, jazz and more. He's one of my personal favourites, so let's hear another from him. This is Dadlar Daladi Benny.
yolcusu var yarine giden yolcusu var yurduna giden yolcusu var gurbete giden yolcusu var hiç dönmeyen hiç dönmeyen oh, oh. <gülüyor> Umur Bitter, Yol Bitmez by the group Ushur A. Ushur A were a band of three brothers, famous for their double neck saz guitar and pushing the boundaries even by the progressive standards of the time. They came to prominence originally as Urson's backing band after Moralash left him to move to Paris, but continued to forge on on their own, releasing a slew of singles and even achieving a fair bit of mainstream success outside of the Turkish rock underground. Now, a slight sidestep, as we look at a player typically considered more of a classical Turkish musician, Arif Sa. A hugely respected musician, even Sa's electric Bahlama couldn't resist moments of psychedelia. This is his track, Shu Samsonun Evlere. Thank you. 
Mustached men, her female peers mostly veering more into pop, folk, and soul, we have the icon Zelda Bajan, typically known as just Zelda. Like the aforementioned Jem Karaja and Idibak Bayram, Zelda was a political force, a protest singer of the highest order with a voice that sounded as much like a call to arms as it did a rock vocalist. Banned from Turkish television for 20 years by the government due to their fear of her music, she was arrested multiple times after the 1980 military coup and had her passport confiscated for six years, denying her even opportunities to perform overseas. Never a member of any political party, Zelda's lyrics and ideals came from the heart and made her the figurehead for the socialist left in Turkey for decades. This is her track, Yaz Gazeteji Yaz. <laughs> Unfortunately, all of this musical splendor was brought to a crashing halt after the right-wing military coup of 1980. With so many musicians outwardly left-leaning in their politics, and the music rooted in a blend of Turkish and Western sounds, many of the artists were arrested, fled the country, or simply stopped performing. Thankfully, a second and even third wave revival has kept the music alive, with Babazula in the 90s, to contemporary groups like Dörya Yıldırım and Grup Şimşek, Altun Gun, Kit Sebastian, Gaia Suakyol and more leading the way in 2024. 
So before we finish, we'll take one more look back at two of the figureheads of the genre. Up first, Erkin Karai with perhaps his most famous track, Estarabim. Estarabim, 
Estarabim, sağdan soldan Estarabim, 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 sağdan soldan Estarabim, 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 sağdan soldan Estarabim, 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 sağdan soldan. Baros Mancho always had a nationalistic sway to him, regularly seen draped in capes, pointed boots and jewellery reminiscent of the Ottoman Empire Turkey had tried to leave behind. Though he never really came out as such, his image, lyrical themes and actions saved him from the coup, even going on to become a hugely successful TV host and Turkish pop culture icon. So we'll finish the show with a two-pronged attack, Baros Mancho featuring one of the most important bands, Moalash. This is their track, Bin Boanun Kuzu.
Kurban yaylasından geldim Barıştırmadım Bugün varsa so much for listening and i hope you enjoyed and use this as a jumping off point to search out more turkish psychedelia of course there are many bands and artists that i didn't have time to fit in here as the turkish musical heritage is such a rich tapestry and we didn't even begin to look into the more pop facing side of things perhaps i'll save that for another show thanks again and keep it locked to nudes <laughs>